Steve Stone, great announcer for the Chicago White Sox. How are we doing, Steve? Well, let's say an announcer for the <laughs> Chicago White Sox. I'm not sure if uh, we're going to put great quite in there yet, but we're having a very good time this year. Uh, and Hawk and I sound much better when the team wins, so we encourage them to do that. Well, that sounds good for both of us there. Yeah. <laughs> You, know, you had a great major league career, and I sure reach a young audience. And got a lot of youngsters out there had that ambition of being a major league ball player. What was the key to your success in the major leagues? The key to my success was first of all getting there, and to get there, you have to have a couple of different things. One, you have to have hopefully tremendous support from your parents. That's a big factor, and. My parents were always there. They were always very supportive. Even when I didn't believe in myself, they believed in me, and I think that's of critical importance. And two, I got a college education before I actually became a good major league pitcher because the odds of making it are infinitesimal. It's become a worldwide game, and we know that when you're competing against the world, the odds of making it uh, are very small. They can't take an education away. And that's one of the things that my parents instilled upon me was uh, you can play baseball and that's a nice thing, but what you really want to do is make sure that if baseball doesn't work out, you have a fallback position. I think that's what an education does for you. And I've talked with a lot of young kids and a lot of youth groups. And I believe that the most important thing to do is get the education. After that, if you can make it, if you're lucky enough to make it and have the ability and the dedication and the single-mindedness of purpose, then that's well and good. But if you can't, and most people don't, then you still have to go out there in the world and make it. And I know I coach college ball, and I scouted for five different major league teams. And as you mentioned, the educational part, I always emphasize the youngsters that everybody don't make it. So when you finish baseball, how tough was that transition to leave baseball? Well, first of all, I stayed unemployed for four days because uh, I had won the Cy Young Award a couple of years before, and then I quit in the middle of the 1982 season because my elbow just wouldn't cooperate any longer. Got a call from ABC Monday Night Baseball. They asked me if I wanted to do television. I told them yes. Well, that was 1982. Mm -hmm. This is 2009, and I'm still doing it. So uh, for me, that was the brass ring. I'd never done it before, but I figured you might as well go for it, which pretty much has characterized my career. And I really didn't have to go out and use the teaching degree in history and government that I got. Mm -hmm. I love sports. If you can't play it, the next best thing is to talk about it. And so here we are, many years later, still doing it. So how do you find 162 games things to talk about? This is, is my 40th year in professional baseball. And you see things on a daily basis that have never happened before. And you would think that after all this time and all those years, that everything that could possibly happen would have happened. Mm -hmm. And now you see Jermaine Dye and Paul Canerco hit back-to-back -back 300th home runs, mm -hmm. something that's never happened in a game before. Mm -hmm. And we see that probably every couple of weeks. We'll see something that's never happened. So. If you love the game, and I have a tremendous love and respect for the game and the people who play it, mm -hmm. you always have something to talk about. And just this last question, because we know you got to keep moving. Uh, I always ask each of our guests on our show one thing that they remember about their major league career that they never forget that those youngsters may not never experience. The All-Star Game in 1980, I got a chance to start it. I threw three perfect innings. I had my parents in the stands. Faced nine men, struck out three, didn't walk anybody, obviously. It hadn't happened in 16 years. It hasn't happened since, and it never will happen now because the starting pitcher is not going three innings anymore. So for me, that was one of the highlights. And then a little later in that season, I believe it was November during the wintertime, I had a phone call from a guy by the name of Jack Lang who told me that I had beaten Mike Norris by nine points and I won the Cy Young Award. So in that season uh, and the year before playing in the World Series, all of the great things that happened to me happened in Baltimore with the Orioles because I had a great team, a Hall of Fame manager, some Hall of Fame pitchers, mm -hmm. and we had a lot of fan support. So for all of you out there who are White Sox fans, come out and support this team because you never know when you might be supporting either a Cy Young Award winner, an MVP, or maybe a future Hall of Famer.
The coach, Michael E. Maiden with Steve Stone.